Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to build a shopping cart using React Redux and Tailwind CSS. So uh, you can see this is the overview of our current projects that we are going to build. And here you can see uh, some beautiful product cart here. You can see this is the first one, second one, third one. And here is the option to upload a new product. You can upload new product from here. So you have to just put your product name, a category then product url price and quantity then you can just add new product then when you add new product then this product section will include the product and here you can see the cart options right now the carts option is zero let me just add a new product first so we're going to just add this product so maybe it's an a log clock wall clock actually wall clock and then we will choose it as a gadget then let me copy this image url actually so we will paste the image url here here we will define a pricing so for this maybe this is one forty dollars and the quantity available quantity is maybe uh, maybe five piece okay now we just input our product name category and uh, stuffs this is stuffs and if we just hit add product then you can see a product is added here and here you can see a label this is for categorizations you can see this is clothing this is bag uh, and here the product name is you can also see available quantity here and here is the pricing so from now you can just add to cart this product to this cart here right now you can see this is a zero when you hit it then it will just increase the quantity and if you hit again then you can see here the number is decreasing and here the quantity is increasing so that's the facility you can also add others quantity then you can see here one is decreasing and one is increasing here and let me add this for now the available items is one when there is no available item you cannot add to the card so let me hit again then you can see the button is disabled so all we do in this project we have to design this type of beautiful product cards where you can just upload cards and you can show it on ui after then here when you hit this card then you can see all the products that we just defined to add it to the cart options you can see here you can just add the increasing of the quantity so when you increase the quantity or decrease the quantity here uh, our subtotal will be uh, will be just calculated you can see when it's uh, three times it's this prices so if you want to add more then you can see the pricing is increasing and the, here you can see the total price and here subtotal price is also here you can see it's decreasing and here is a cross button you can just if you just want to remove it you can just click this cross button let me just hit then the items has gone you can also decrease the quantity and you can also increase it or you can just delete it so now we have on items and it's these prices and there are some shipping cost and here is the checkout buttons and if you don't want to just uh if you want to remove it from the cart you can just simply uh, hit this cross button or you can just add it others product from the home page if you hit home page then you can see all available products are here you can add any products and back to here to check here you can see product image product name pricing and category and here is the product pricing if you increase the quantity then this price will be uh, increased and if you just decrease this price, uh, product will be decreased at here you can see the total price so that's what we're going to make today so let's get started and in this project so we're going to use react redux and tailwind css so if you have no previous knowledge about this topic please follow me i will try to explain what to do and how you can make this type of website and for a little reminder that it's a assignment projects for a course that i enrolled uh 
previously and i am just showing this uh, just assignment to you so that you can understand how you can do uh, work with redux in your react project so let's get started at first as i am going to show you from the beginning what i have to do i have to create a folder here i will create a new folder so let me create a new folder we'll name it products uh or projects actually projects I just name it projects and we will open this folder on VS code you can just simply open your VS code and then let me drag this to VS code here you can see this is the projects and this project is empty because we don't have any uh, folders and other stuff here so what we actually do we'll just open our tailwind CSS and here we will hit this get started and then here are the installations process and we would like to use frameworks that would be bit so that's why we will hit bit and here you will see a uh, step by step guideline how you set up your projects actually react projects using bit and you can install tailwind CSS that's the step by step guideline you can follow it along with me so here at first you have to copy this command and then in vs code what you have to do you have to open this terminal or you can open it from here you can see this is terminal you can open a terminal and here you have to paste this code copy this code and paste it here so this code says that you will install bit and here this is your project name and for this you will use react that's it we will install a bit actually react projects using bit uh, let me rename this project so that's why we have to customize this so let me add this is shopping cart so it is open cart and then if i just press enter then you can see here a folder will be created and some others uh, folder or subfolder will be inside this folder so let me check so now we can see a folder is created that we named it here and now it says you have to change directory to the city uh, shopping carts actually we have to go inside this folder so that's why you will type cd and the folder name so that would be shopping cart and press enter after then we have to uh, install our npm packages if you check your folder structure you can see there is no node modules included here so that's why we will command npm install you can type it or you can just simply copy it from here so npm install then if you press enter then node modules will start downloading here you can see and it takes a few seconds based on your internet speed so please wait Uh, after installing you can see a node modules is added here and right now you can run your projects by npm run dev so let me just uh, type npm run dev to run these projects on browsers then here you will find a localhost url you have to either type it or you can just press ctrl and click here to open it on browsers here you can see a bit and react project is created if you refresh then you can see the default uh, home page default uh, page of the react projects and we need to customize this react project so that's why if you hit src then you can see app.jsx here you can see there are some stops this is the stops that are showing here so if you just remove all of these stuff so here is a fragment you can see the fragment is empty fragment if you mark wall and remove it then you can see our website is blank now if you type anything hello there then you can see it's showing here actually our app is rendering the app function so it's from app.jsx you can just remove on uh, all unused variables from here okay that's fine now you can see this is the thing and right now what you have to do here you can see app.css there are some css you can remove this css 
and here index.css you can also find some css remove all the default css that is defined previously i just remove that css from app.css and index.css so if you now see our uh, text is here then the second step we have to follow is we have to install tailwind css so that's why this is the command we will install as a deep uh, Step dependency will install tailwind css post css and auto prefixer so that's why let me copy this line first and either we can open the terminal again you can just stop these projects by pressing ctrl c so click here then press ctrl c then it will say would you like to terminate it yes i want then you can just paste your code here again so let me copy and paste it here and press enter this time we are installing tailwind css post css and auto prefixer so to check it if it's installed or not you can just check your package.json file and if you scroll a little bit in this dev dependency you can see we have installed tailwind css post css and this is the auto prefixer that we just installed and then next we have to initialize uh, initialize our tailwind css so that's why npx tailwind css init dash p so that's why we will paste this command here actually right now we can see here there is no um config file for tailwind css so that's why we will need a config file so that's why this is the commands if you just press enter then you can see a tailwind.config.js file is created okay that's fine next we have to configure our template path actually we have to define how tailwind will be configured using these methods we have to define the content path we'll just copy these sections and what we have to do we have to close all these steps let me just close this and now we'll open this tailwind.config.js file and here right now content is empty but it will say you have to replace these content sections by this code here is the code so i just mark all content sections and i will just replace this content remove and replace okay that's fine next what you have to do you have to add some tailwind derivatives to your css what you have to do you have to go to src then you have to go to index.css and you have to replace this three line so i just copy it and i will go to the src folder then index.cs folder and here i just paste the three line code after then you can see you can run your projects again by npm run dev let me just define npm run dev okay fine so here our project is running let me close it and if i just refresh then you can see our tailwind is working you can add tailwind css code to your app.jsx so let me open app.jsx and here you can just drive any tailwind css class right now maybe you can just increase text size text size so that would be to excel so now if you check then you can see it's to excel you can want to make it bold so front bold then you can see it's bold you can color it by text red 600 so it's now text a uh, red text so actually here you can see that when i just typing it's suggesting me what uh, some css classes so how is it possible actually it's possible for an extension so that is tailwind.config.js so if you just search tailwind then you can see uh, a extension that name is tailwind css intelligence this is the official extension of tailwind css that extension is suggesting me when i just typing anything here you can see it's suggesting if i want to need margin then if i type margin and you can see it's suggesting margin zero four pixel uh, four pixel margin 
merge in 12 pixels and it's searching everything so that's why this extension is very essential in this project so you have to install this and you also need another extension that is es7 uh, and then here you can see uh, i just installed this extension this is for react functions uh, importing uh, by using this extension you can just import this type of components very easily uh, what you have to do actually you have to define let me just define rafce and then you can just import react component actually uh, arrow components and export it by default by using this simple line commands so npm uh, rafce then you can see it's importing so this way actually we can just use this so we don't we need these two extensions then hold the next actually so let me check now it will show app because we just change some uh, thing here so next what you have to do you have to just make these websites this is our goal we have a numbers this type of number and so let's make a number first so in this src folder we'll create a folder so that will be components and in this folder we'll create a component so that would be number.jsx and here we'll just import react arrow functions export components so this is export component and you can remove it so react is not defined so that's why you can remove it we don't need that code so now we have to import this number to our app sections so instead of app we will just import number press enter then at the top you can see number is here who will design this number so actually for this uh number or this type of card we're using daisy y it's popular library for tailwind css it's very convenient to use so that's why we are use this uh, library to just make our code more uh, beautiful and reduce our time so that's why we will just use this library so how to do that you have to just hit here then this is the installation process you have to uh, install daisy ui so let me just open my terminal again and for this time we don't uh, like to just close these every time we will just open a new terminal let me open git bash or others you can open anything and firstly you can see the folder is now projects folder but we have to go inside this folder so that's why we will type cd and the project uh, uh, folder name actually that would be shopping cart and press enter then we will just paste we will copy this line and paste it and here it actually says we will install daisy y as a dev dependency so press enter then second time what you have to do you have to modify tailwind.config.js file and you have to just add this plugin you have to just uh, copy this and edit your tailwind.config.js file this is the tailwind.config.js file and here we'll just update this plugin section so you can either copy the whole line and paste it here actually okay that's it here you will find an error how you can fix it it's actually warning it's not a error it actually warning from eslint from this file actually from this file so let me close this and here you have to just configure this actually so let me show it uh, here you can see env that means environment variables and here you will include node that means uh, from now our project is ready to using node so that's why we just define node row here okay now we can see the error has gone so let me close this and here let's get started to design this number right now our number is this but we need some type of this type of number so that's why let me just search a number component from here so if you scroll a little bit then you can see number sections hit here if you scroll a little bit then 
you can find this type of navbar you can see i used here will be and logo here will be cards something like this i just use that on so you will just copy all this code from here and just paste it here actually or you can just define in nav sections and paste it here okay so let me just format this code okay so now if you check then here you can see daisy y and this is the icons and profiles okay so right now let me just add some customizations we need a background color so that would be here we'll add a class name that would be busy indigo 900 or something so now we can see it's busy indigo 900 and we need to define text will be white so that would be text white so right now it's fine okay we need it on the center positions or something like this so that's why here on this navbar div we will just define max width so that would be 7 excel okay and we'll define mx auto that means it will move to center let me check so if you check right now this is the thing we can just close this stuffs so here um, now you can customize this name so let me search if you just scroll a little bit uh maybe where is it so maybe it's here actually daisy way you can just search it this way and this is the logo name we'll just simply define it would be shopping purge or something let me just do it it's shopping cart and here we need some space so where is that thing maybe it's here actually maybe it's now here actually we can just add some space a space will be maybe px4 so now you can see there's mass space and we need a button that would be home button so that's why in this div actually we'll just take a new div so in this div we'll just take a button this button will be for home and here we need some this class actually you can just co copy this class and you can just paste it here so let me check it here this is home you can just sometime it, you can just make it uh, font semi bold so that it will be something like bold okay our number is done if this number is done here what you have to do you have to just design this type of uh home sections so, uh, this type of home page so that's why what you will do will actually create a home components let me uh create a components inside this component section so that name would be home.jsx and here we will also use rfc react functional components and you have to just uh just use this as a uh, ESLint variables and just to remove the warning actually from here we'll just paste it and you can just use it so now it will not show any error it's very boring to show every time remove this line so that's why i just do that i just simply here defined no used variables and defined it's zero or off okay that's fine so right now what you have to do you have to design this home section so look here look this home sections here on the left side we have products tip and here we are showing products and here we're adding products we have to think and you can just define it main and here we can just define as some class name so that would be firstly we have to define max width and that would be 7 excel and we need to define mx auto so that it will be on center positions and for this we need some padding that would be py8 and we need some padding to the x-axis so that's why py4 so 
at this time you can just define another div and this div will have two things left side and right side so let me define another div so that would be left side and another one will be right side right side okay so let me check it so if you just check you cannot see anything because we just didn't import it so where we have to import we have to import it on here so that would be our app.jsx and here we have to import uh, maybe we can just import it uh, we can just create another folder actually for the page so let me name it page.jsx rafc actually i'm doing this because here we actually use the home page so let me import home page here and now here actually import page sorry it will be page components okay fine so if you just do that i just extrally doing this actually it uh, i have a reason for this so just to do it create a page.jsx and import your home here so if you just check it here you can see left side right side so it's from our home components and for now what you have to do you have to just design the home page so here firstly in this div we will define grid uh, so that's why it will be a class name and it would be grid and by default on a small devices the grid calls will be free by default grid calls will be one and we need to define gap will be eight maybe okay let's check so here you can see by default this is the thing and right now what you have to do inside this div actually will target this div and make it call span 2 so call span 2 that means it will take this type of length the first div will take to will just actually uh, divided our full container as a three div actually here you can see we just define container three times and then we defined here we will apply two and here will be one okay fine so in this div we will show all products so that would be uh, let me define that would be firstly let me define no products found no products found because we don't have any product right now so that's why i am just showing it and this time we will just make these sections actually uh, actually these sections uh, up to functionality for this so let's just do that so for it we have to create another component the component will be add product dot jsx and right now we'll just import it on the right div okay so let me just permit it and here we'll just add product add product maybe it's not working because we didn't import react functional components so that's why now add product add product okay so instead of this you can see add product we will design the add product sections so let's do that so for adding products here at this time what you have to do you have to define let me define some uh, default thing firstly we'll define a s4 and here we'll just make sure add new products so it's the header of this product okay so if you check then you can see add new product after then we need to define a form so that would be form and we don't need to define actions 
and here at this time what we will define we will just define some class name let me define class name and then class name will be a space y4 maybe it's x space y4 after then we need some background color so that would be uh, we need some text color actually text color that would be a hard coded text color so that would be three uh, five three four five three four and f four f this type of colors after then here we need a div inside this div we will have a level this level will be for product name we don't need to define html4 so that would be product name and after then we need a input field so that would be for name and it would be an id name or here actually we need a class name so that would be add product input class name okay uh, so let's check here you can see product name and here is a input so we'll just styling it a little bit later but this time it's okay after then uh, what you can do you can just define some class name so that would be space y maybe two okay that's fine mass is space so what actually do actually we need to write some css so that it will be uh, uh beautiful so that's why let's get started to add some custom css we can just add our css on app.css uh, actually uh, we are using some css because uh, here we need to repeat some code at this time uh, that will be class name and here we will define form container so this is form container and we will add some css to this form container so let me define overflow hidden after then we can just define border radius so that would be 0.375 ram so now if you check so let me just copy it maybe it's not working Uh, is our app.css connected yeah app.css is connected so let me add some others css actually then we can just fix it so working or not we'll define border width border width so that would be one pixel after then we'll define tw Easy opacity. Okay, we don't need tips. Uh, we can add some background color. So background color will be RGB color. RGB colors, and then the value will be 250. Then here green value will be 250, and then blue value will be 255, and we'll just add some opposite actually that's why we can just define rgb and the opposite will be sometime 0.7 so let me check it so here is the div you can just add more thing you can just add this type of thing or you can just customize it maybe okay uh, just you can just do it by your own actually here i don't have any opinion or you can just you know speak this 
so tag maybe let me inspect this and here where is the form so this is the form let me just inspect the color actually the color is this you can just copy this whole form or you can just copy these two sections actually let me just replace it and maybe it's from a variable so that's why at the top okay let me just keep it that we don't uh, need to must be worry about it and here actually we'll define a padding so padding will be on frame so let me padding on frame okay fine so let me check so here padding on ram so now so if you have do this then you can just target this uh, you can just target this title so let me just define a class name so that would be from title and let's add some class name for this from title we'll define margin top so that would be 0.5 frame after then we will define margin bottom so that would be true ram after then we need to define text align center we need font size so that would be 1.25 ram and we need line height line height that would be 1.75 frame after then font weight that would be 700 okay let's check it here this is the form title and here we need to define this uh actually these sections actually we will target this div and we have a level and then input field so that's why here at this time we'll target dot and let me copy these classes here is the class and we'll add this class and the width would be 100 percent then we'll define border radius border radius will be four pixels then we will have border width bw that means border width one pixel then we defined p left that means padding left so that would be 0 0.5 frame and pr 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 that means padding right will be 0 0.5 frame after then p top 0 0.25 actually 25 rem pb that means padding bottom 0 0.25 rem okay that's thing and here we need to add some other css equivalent to this div so let me just add div and here when we focus what will happen will just happen a outline the outline will be two pixel solid transparent okay then we need to define outline offset the offset will be two pixel okay that's it let me check here you can see when you hit then it will show an outline okay this type of thing after then we need to define a submit button so that's why submit button and this button actually will have margin top so that would be on frame then we will have display block will have width 100 percent bw uh, br actually border radius so that would be 0 dashmic 375 frame we need to define
padding so that would be top and bottom um will be something like 0 5 frame and left on right will be one frame okay something like this and let me copy this and here actually after then we'll have a button and the type will be button and class name will be submit and maybe type can be submit okay that's fine so let me see here is the thing and here will be the button and let me add some class name so that would be the indigo 700s and we can just define its add product and let me define text white okay so this type of thing we can just define border radius round it maybe okay so now it's must round it so this type of form we need and for this let me complete all other stuff here so we need a categorization sections and we need a url sections price and thing so our main task is here with this section is done and now other stuff is very easy so here category category okay let me just show it we need to define a div and here we will define the class name space y to actually it's not x it will be two so this time the level will be level we don't need to the four the level will be category and then we'll have this input field uh, we actually need to select so actually we need select we don't need an input field and for this we'll just define we don't uh, just let me just name it cat category and i do will be category it's not mandatory but you can keep it inside this we'll have option the first option will be select a category so let me check so here you can see select a category and you can add other options so let me just copy it so the second one will be clothing and the value will be the same thing you can just copy it here and just a small letter it's third time here we'll add gadget you can just customize it so let me just a small letter this gadget sections and here we'll define bags and that would be bags okay that's it so let me check here you have drop down sections you can see this type of drop down and you can work it with so this time what actually do here in this select we have to add class name you can just copy this input class name and here you can just paste it at product input so let me check it now you can see the category section is this one you can just choose clothing you can just choose gazet you can just choose this one you can just choose any of this okay so this section is done now we can just need you can just copy this you can just copy the first one actually and after then this div let me define image img div and here you can just simply paste it in a stage of this uh you will just change this name that would be image u r l so let me check here is the image url and you can just change the type so that would be url type url type okay 
okay that's it so this will just receive url and after then we need another div so let me copy this and share this will be price and quantity q u n t t okay so that's it let me just paste it and here uh, we don't actually need this we can just cut it and we'll take another div actually inside this div paste it here we just remove these classes from here actually and paste it here so at this div we will define create and that would be read calls to we'll define gap eight after then we define pb that means padding bottom will be maybe four so if you check now you can see the image is image url is here and here we need another one so that is four so maybe we can just make the name that would be price and we can just copy this div again and that would be for quantity okay so now this is price and quantity so let me make it customizations and here we need to include that would be our type will be number so let me input number and here the type would be also number and you can just customize it price just customize it for price and then this one will be for quantity and also this is quantity so right now here you can see you can just add a product name you can choose its and you can just paste a url maybe you can just paste this url for now and then you can just add the quantity then you can sorry price and quantity and then you can just hit this button so when you hit this button actually what will happen actually uh we can just install react hook from to capture this uh information so that's why we'll just use this hook from so capture this information so that's why we'll hit this and here we'll install these sections as we're installing this here import sorry install this so let me just install react hook form it's actually uh form handling you can handle this form better way here if you want to just check uh if you want to check maybe let me back to the home page so here is the demo you can see you can just create this type of form uh very easily so here you can see when you just submit this form then it will just receive by objects so we'll just make this type of thing easily so for this how you can just use it here the uses way is let me go at the top and if you just hit get started here you can see hit this javascript we have to import it at first so let me import it in our projects at the beginning after then we have to define this so here we just import it then you can just define a functions on submit functions so let me define it we can just make it in a Curly braces and here on the from tag we will include this on submit on this form tag so this is the form tag and we will define on submit after that uh, we will have to define a value and this way we have to include this way so let me just for the name type here we can just simply define so register so that would be here would be the name and you can just define placeholder or something so that product name okay let me check so product name so let me inspect it 
So if you type in name, maybe a uh, white sweater, and if you hit the submit button, you can see it's capturing name. You just capturing this name. Okay, that's the thing. It's capturing the name after then we can just use this way so let me use it uh, you can also define it true if you want so maybe you can just make it required true so let me make it required true so that without filling this form anyone cannot be able to submit so after name registers inside this register we can just include required true okay without just filling up anyone can it be submit so let me copy this for uh, these sections and here actually maybe we can make it category register will be category query and that would be must require true after then here for this it would be for sorry let me copy this line and paste it here and this would be for img eu rl okay and then for the pricing here we will include this is price and lastly here we'll target this and paste it that would be for quantity q u a n t i t y okay so we just include all of this and let me refresh our websites and here we'll just name a product name we'll just choose a category maybe it's back then we'll choose a url so maybe this this url for now let me paste it after then let me just select a price and let me add a quantity maybe 10th and if you hit bar hit this add product button you can see uh nothing has happened why actually okay it says it's not mm why it's not working actually maybe is their image url has an issue so maybe you can just make it text so that it will just capture properly this what are the issues here and put type okay here is the mistakes that would be ms url the name has a problem and id is the same thing so let me refresh product name category then actually open it on new div copy this url paste it here then prices quantity hit this button what actually did mistake here everything is fine i cannot find any error maybe Record MSC well. Mm. Let me just uh, just console log the error. What actually here is happened? How to let me just console log the error for this think actually maybe here we can just change errors dot
this thing maybe let me hit again this field is required actually this field is required okay uh let me just make it not required okay if you hit it can says this field is required actually for the mistake i did here isn't isn't it a valid url hit 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 it's not working actually why let me just delete this for now if i hit it's working but why not working for the url so for the image url so let me just check it it's input field and let me just inspect what is here it's text fine it has a image url let me not to include id image url that would be required true text will be url type okay uh, just getting the error so getting the url actually so the mistake was maybe i don't know what uh, it's not showing but right now it's showing so you can see now it's fine okay so if you just uh, hit this button and get these informations on the console the next option is if you have to move to the redux actually you have to move to the redux when you hit this button you can see we're just receiving objects and we will just set these objects on a, a straight and then actually show it on our website something like this will show it on ui so let's move to the redux sections so at the beginning here on this src folder we'll create a redux folder we will just write over our redux code here so right now in this in uh, redux folder we will create another folder actually in this applications we will have uh, some uh, actually two or three features so first one will be for product feature so that's why we're creating a folder that would be products and in this product uh, we will have to create an action type so that would be action types dot says and here we will define all our actions so firstly uh, let me define a variable that would be conost add product underscore product uh, please try to type it uh, capital letters so that you can just distinguish between which one is action and action type so that would be products and here we'll define add product product so this is first action type and we'll just simply export it export it then second one will be again we have to export first then we'll define a variable that would be add quantity underscore quantity here add quantity and lastly or we need another export and that would be a variable of remove quantity remove underscore quantity and that would be remote quantity we actually need three functions actually using this uh, variable we will add a new product we will add quantity by this and we will remove quantity okay 
that's we need we need three type of actions after then we will hit this product actually you can see underlined is here that means it's selected if you create a folder we need to define actions so that's why this is actions and here we will define js that means a javascript folder and here we will just define all our actions so first action will be conost here we will define functions add product and here it will receive product so actually when you hit this submit button it will just capture all the data maybe let me show you it will capture all the informations and maybe this is 50 and here we'll get these product informations here actually then we'll have to define an arrow calibrasis and from here we'll return what we will return actually we'll return an object so from here we have must have to define a type when you are just defining actions you must have to define a type first okay that would be our add product type so import it from action types and then we actually define payload payload and this payload will be this product actually we'll see the information as a payload here so that's it then you can just export it so that you can import it from others files so that's why export it okay that's the one second on will be the same thing so we'll define export then we'll define a function so that would be add quantity add quant tt and here we'll receive two things first one is product id we'll just target the product which one we have to add quantity we'll just target product and then by id and then quantity and here we'll have to close these functions inside this we have to return as usual then curly braces type will be and that would be add quantity underscore quantity then payload will be this product id uh we'll actually pass these two things so that's why we'll define an object here and here we will have product id is true product id something like this as this is same we just keep it simply product id then we will pass the quantity so pass this quantity as a payload okay that's it and lastly we need the functions for the remove quantity so conost export conost remove quantity and here it will just get product id he uh, will filter product by an id after then we'll just return it so that's why firstly define type the type will be remove quantity import it and then define payload the payload will be this product id our actions we have defined our actions look it's very simple we just define some actions and then we hit again this product sections and we will create a reducer functions so it's very important to define a reducer function so let's create a reducer functions so that would be product reducer product reducer dot js and here we'll define conost product reducer and that would be a functions let me define arrow functions and then we have to export it so let me export default as product reducer so that's it this function receive two things first one is a state and then second one is action okay so we need to define an initial state so that's why we'll hit this product again and initialize a state that would be 
initial state dot js and here our initial state would be something like export conost initial state so that would be an empty array actually we'll just keep all these objects inside an array actually that would be an array of objects so that's why initial array and at the beginning here actually we'll define our initial state so we import it from dot slash initial states and inside these actually we'll just write all our code so that would be for this we are using swiss statement so swiss statement it's actually equivalent to if else and if you have too much if uh, if else condition then you can use twice so here the key will be action inside this action we have type so this is our action type so you can just copy this and action don't type that means every time it just check this type and by using this data you will do something okay that's my goal so that's why action dot type and here we'll just define the action type value here so look for the first one it's add product so the value would be this action type equally here you can see this is action type that is this one and then the value so here would be first one would be add product let me import it okay now we don't need the break we actually uh, return something so that's why we'll just return and here we'll return an array so firstly we'll spread the state so that we don't want to mutate it and then we'll define an object so that would be an id so id if we need to define an id for the next product id so next bonus next id that would be we will just pass item here uh, and then it will be just simply calculate the id so that's why curly braces and here we'll just return we'll just take the items and we'll just add a reducer here and then reducer will just receive two things id and item then here we have to define our functions and here we'll calculate by math dot max method and in this max method firstly it will just pass an id and this item dot id every item will have an, an id you can see uh, there are some property and we will add a new property that is id so that would be item dot id and after then we will simply make a minus one and finally from here we will just add plus one actually by this way we will get an id and we will set this id to this id so that would be next id and we will have to pass this state okay so that's fine after then after then uh, we need to define dot dot slash action dot here we will pass all our payloads so this is the payloads that means we will pass our product here actually after then we need to define price the price will be we will just get the price from look uh, we will get the price from firstly its product firstly its product then payload then price so action dot payload dot price and sometimes it may be a string so that's why we use uh, a float parse float actually and then we'll just pass it inside here after then we'll just add quantity quantity then the quantity will be same we'll just get it from actions then payload inside this payload we will have a quantity field so look here actually we will have a quantity field and it's a string so that's why we need uh, it to convert into a uh, actually integer so percent 
and share will pass this okay so by this way we are just creating a new uh, we are adding a new products here so if you do this they are almost done we need to do other cases for the second case the case will be the second actions so that would be add quantity so this would be add quantity here and let me import it and then we'll just return it so return value will be we'll just map this state dot map actually we'll map the all initial states actually we'll map all the states and here we'll get product then every time we get a product inside this product we'll check two things actually let me check here first we'll check if product will get a product dot id we'll check the id to the action dot payload look here actually if you check this add quantity here the payload will be this actual uh, product id so if we get this product id then we'll just check it so action dot payload uh, then that would be look here actually it would be product id product id so if you found the product id then would return and another object so that would be we'll just copy the product by using a spread operator then we'll just hit this quantity so look here the state is quantity we will update this quantity so our quantity will be product product vitore we have a quantity you can see inside this product we have a quantity then we will just add a plus so that would be inside action we have a payload then we have this quantity actually product you can see from here we have a quantity we will copy this quantity and just paste it here okay that's fine if uh, you can find the product id and the uh, payload product id is the same then you will return this otherwise here you can just simply return the we'll define a else block and we'll define return the product return all the products so we don't update that if it's not found so this is another case so and lastly we need to define remove so that's why case would be remove quantity and here actually we need to define return statement and then return statement will the same thing so a state will just capture the state and apply the math operations here we'll receive product same thing and here we need to define a functions so let me define a functions curly braces and actually if you just check here it's receiving an id in this payload so that's why we'll check let me check what we'll check we'll check if product id dot id then we'll check if it's equal to action look inside this action we have simply this id inside this payload so that's why uh, if we have action dot payload that means the id and then we will just return an object so that would be the copy of the product and then we'll apply the quantity same thing we'll apply the quantity the quantity will be product dot quantity and then minus one actually we're just reducing one uh else actually so here we'll define else block else will return the products okay that's fine and finally by default we'll return the state 
return the state our reducer function for this is okay for the product section is okay so if this okay then what next actually uh we will just hit this redux options and here we have to create a, a store but before that let me just make a root reducer so why actually uh we will have different redux uh, feature so that's why we are just defining a root reducer that would be root reducer so here we'll combine all our reducer functions so that's why root reducer dot js and here we'll just uh for this actually we need to install redux so let me just install redux by npm then install then we'll have to install redux and react redux as it's the combining from uh, to react and redux so that's why we're actually importing this install redux react redux and press enter so it's done now here we'll define root reducer and then here we'll call the combined reducer so combined reducers and here we can just combine two or many reducers so that's why so inside here we will have to define an objects inside this objects we will just make the for the product reducer so for the product and we'll call the product reducer okay fine and finally we have to export it export default our uh, root reducer so after defining root reducers look i just defining in inside this redux actually it's outside of the product and also here actually hit this redux and define a store a store.js and in this store.js actually we will create a store so that's why let me connost a store and the store here we have to create a store so that's why create a store and let me import it from redux and here we'll pass the root reducer root reducer okay and finally we have to export it so export default store okay so our reducer function is done now we have to use it so that's why let me close okay keep it there so let me use it we will use it inside this app section so here we have a div we don't need to have this div we will call the provider from react redux so let me just add some corrections so provider and here we'll pass the store the store will be however this store actually that we defined uh, where we defined it actually let me close here the store actually so we need to import the store here so type a store and import it from dot slash redux dot slash store so now the uh, redux is connected to our projects so still now you can see anything but what if let's implement it to the at uh, at the products try to add this product so we'll back to the add product paste and here will add the functionality firstly uh, let me close the end and here here we have on submit and we are getting the data and right now what we will do actually we will dispatch actions so that's why let me connoist dispatch dispatch and we have to use dispatch from redux so use dispatch import this method so now inside this actually on submit what you will do we'll just dispatch a actions so that would be look here our first action is sorry where is the actions let me import these actions so here first method is add product we'll uh, call this inside this reducer so inside this dispute so let me import it from actions and then we'll pass this data so if we pass this data what happened actually so let me uh let me just go back to home and here we want to uh, show our data so that's why 
in this home sections we are simply just let me define a variable that would be products products and here we'll just use use selector methods from react redux and here we have to define a state and we'll just define uh, what we want to get actually we'll want to get a state dot product look uh, here actually if you just uh, go the initial states so here initial states that means states let me close these reducers so we will have product reducers and here you can see initial states so initial states dot products so we just define it as a product so that's why we'll simply define it state dot products okay so if you do this then you can just console log this clg and then we'll just console this product so that we can just check it okay let me check it so let me refresh this space and for now it's empty from the line number seven that means we don't have product but let me add a new product let me choose a category let me choose an image then prices maybe 50 dollars and quantity will be 12 and if you hit and it says items dot user is not a functions let me hit here so it's not a functions here is an error let me the id is not getting there let me fix it where is the error maybe it's producers and here actually items it's not a function so let me check let me write it again so items dot reduce that would be and here we have to define two things so first one will be a functions after then we need to define so that would be actually let me just clear here actually inside this will have uh, will receive two things first one is id and then second one this item and here we will calculate math dot max and here the method will be item id and item dot id then we will add a comma then we'll define a minus one after then we'll have a plus on here actually we'll just define a plus on so let me console log next id by default hope let me close hit here it says parse int is not a function so maybe where is from it it's from here actually maybe you are just typing mistake so that would be parse int so this one okay now i think it will work let me clear all of this and hit then you can see and product is there our product is updating and here the first one is id zero this is the category this is the image URL so everything is showing that means our reducer function is working so if it's working then you can show your product data on this home page so let me show it here maybe we can just show the products uh, so what to do actually you can just show the product name for now let me just show the product name so products and this uh, we need to define maybe for the first items then we need to define name maybe let me check so look it's displaying the name so if we have too many products we can just do a map operations and can display all the products item so let me do that 
So for this actually in this home sections what we will do actually inside this call span uh, inside this call span we have to display the product so that's why we'll take a new tip inside this tip we'll map it firstly we'll check products length dot length as it's a gts uh, as it's a array you can just check it maybe its product length is greater than zero we'll just do something maybe we can show the product length for now or you can just map the product product dot map and here we'll just get p and i that means product and index number then we'll just do something and here we can show the product for now let me show the product maybe we can just sorry maybe we can just take a p tag for now p tag and here you can show the p dot name that means product name p dot name and here we need to define a key props we can just pass this i okay otherwise otherwise after this we'll define a clone and we'll define another div so that would be div so let me use div here and here we'll define no product product found okay so this is the let's check it so let me clear wall and everything is here so right now if you refresh let me just go to the root directory no product found let's try to add a new product let me choose a category and here and image let me choose price quantity then if you hit then you can see the product is showing that means you can show this type of products here okay let's uh, we have to design a products item uh, so that we can just how we display the product so that's why we'll just import it here let me just add a new components the component will be product item components dot jsx we have to import react functional components and here we will use this so that would be from home page you know state of this actually you know state of this actually we can import this product item and is it imported maybe not and we need to define a key props the key props will be index number and we also pass this product so that's why we type product and this product will be this p that means product okay that's fine so if any products found we will just render this components right now uh, by default you can see product item and we will display the product so let's design the product item this div so we'll design this section right now so here we will use tailwind card so from here so let me just choose a card sections if you just scroll then you can see the card sections right here we need this type of card we can just copy the whole card and you know state of this we can just paste it here and here you can see image and here we'll just show our image so that would be img url maybe we're just receiving as a url so maybe image url something like this here we'll receive product and we can destructure it so conost here we'll just destructure id image url then we just destructure name 
with the structure category with the structure price price quantity quantity from this product so let me just handle it quick fixed and disable okay okay right now we can just pass this image url from here so if you do this maybe you can see this product and in this card is showing we can just customize this card so for this actually the first one we can just add some classes to this image sections here we'll add class so that would be we'll define height will be 80 and w will be full okay so that's it now it's detail is strong here we need to display the product name so we'll just hit it here so that would be name we'll pass the name here so let me it's not showing the product and here we don't have any description so that's why we'll just add lorem text and we don't need full thing we'll just keep it little lorem text okay so this is lorem text and now we need to display pricing and other stuff so that's why after this we'll define another div and here for this we'll have a p tag so that would be available quantity avail avail then here we'll just pass the quantity so let me check the quantity so if you do this then you can see we have 10th quantity after then we need to show another paragraph text so that would be pricing so we need to define a dollar sign here that would be price okay so now you can see here is the pricing that i defined and here we need to add flex here we need to add flex justify between and on this tip on this paragraph tag we'll define w full and here we'll define class name text left okay let me check now it's there and this button i think we don't need to define justify int actually uh, we'll keep it here and we can just add some margin top so that would be m2 okay this is the button we can just make these buttons a little bit small so that's why the button will be a same that means size will be a small okay that's fine then so look here actually this is the button and this is something and right now we need to show category at the top so that's why we can just choose something like this type of bass we can just copy this bass from here and we will keep it inside this figure actually this here is the image and we will keep it inside this and here we will add class name that would be relative and in this div we will just make it absolute and we will make it top three and right maybe three so let me check it here is the new instead of new we want to show the category so that would be our category okay let me check so it's back right now so if you do this let's try to add a, another product so that would be maybe sweater for women we'll just choose a category maybe i just choosing an image i don't know i am not sure let me choose a wrong image and here the pricing will be 152 quantity will be maybe five things and here we'll hit here you can see the clothing is here but it's not side by side so that's why we'll go back to the home sections and here we'll apply class name and maybe we can just apply flex justify between items start maybe something like this so now it's side by side we can define each flex by default call and on 
small devices or on medium devices that would be flex row okay something like this so we have two things if you want to just add another one let me add another one and it's not working maybe instead of this can we use grid or something okay we can use grid actually maybe let me use grid grid and then we'll define on medium devices grid will be calls to by default grid will be calls one so now i think it's fine we need to define some uh, gap so that would be age so now mask gap but we need to define gap y actually gap y age something like this or you can just define mask gap that would be 12 okay mask gap but it's little bit let me just reduce maybe 10 is okay for now okay fine so if you check in a small devices you can see uh some products is there but we'll fix it but it's showing on side by side let's fix it so on this product card actually product items here we have a fixed width we uh, we want it only medium devices so that's why we will define on medium devices now i think it's okay it's showing properly so let me check maybe from wires the extra padding there are some extra padding maybe okay fine for now it's okay so if you can show the products then you need to when someone hit this buy button or you can just change it to add to cart add to cart this type of button or we can just define it add to cart okay we just when someone hit this button then the estate will be uh, increasing or decreasing but right now it's hard coded so that's why here on this button we'll just apply a one click method and here actually we need to pass a functions handle add to cart so that would be a functions let me define this function at the top here actually after this we'll define conost and define these functions and here what we will do we'll just look uh, add to cart functions but the cart is not implements actually uh, so that's why we don't able to show that so firstly we will have to just add another feature something like add to cart then we can just add it so let me hit this close this products and hit this reducers and we're going to add a features for this redux functionality and that would be for cards so let me add it would be a feature so that would be cards and inside this we'll need the same thing we'll need a action type action types dot cs we are in this action type dot cs we need to do some actions type so that would be export then we need to define conost add underscore to actually to underscore card then we will define add underscore to cards after then we need to define export remove from card there is export conost and remove from card so that would be removed from remove from card after then we need to define increase quantity and decrease quantity we need to define export conost increase 
then quantity quantity equal increase quantity then export cost decrease quantity decrease quantity well, our uh, action type is done now we will just make another action so that's why we will hit this card and create a new file so that would be all actions and then this here we need to define actions so for this firstly uh, for the first one we need to export and we need to define a functions that would be add add to cart and here we will just receive a product and then we will just must have to return so let me return and from here what we have to return firstly we need to define a type the type would be add underscore to carts add to cart after then we need to define a payload payload the payload will be this product and then similar way let me just copy it and instead of add to cart here we'll define remove from cart and it will receive a product id actually that would be an id and here we'll call remove from cart it will just set the payload as an id after then uh, we'll have the same thing we can just copy this one in a state of remove cart here we can just define increase increase quantity dt and here you know instead of this we can just define increase quantity after then we will also copy this one and that would be for decrease so d decrease quantity and you know instead of this that would be decrease quantity okay okay that's fine uh, all our functionality is added so now we have to define a reducer functions so here we we'll create a new file so that would be card reducer so card reducer dot says and here uh, actually before that we need to define a initial state so let me create an initial state initial state dot says almost initial state so that would be empty states uh, empty array and we have to export it let me export it okay so in this here we will define card reducer and here we have to pass two things first one will be a state and that would be action and firstly finally we have to export it export default that would be card reducer okay that's fine so here instead of a state we will define initial initial state then we'll just try write the code for it so inside here what you have to do I have to define as usual we have to define Swiss statement and the key will be action dot type as usual and the value will be for the first one here you can see the first action is add to cart so here let me input it add to cart and we have to return it 
return then what we actually return okay before that let me find the products so that's why we will define almost and that would be product and here we'll just call a function so let me define a function function will be almost find product in cart actually in cart and it will be find product so that's why here we'll define a state a state and then action then we'll have to define a functions and then we simply return a state uh, return a state dot find method then we'll just receive a product from here we'll have to mass product p dot product id you can see every time we will just set a product id so you can see we have a product id p dot product id then we are just trying to match it action dot payload dot id so if find you find we can call these functions from here and then what actually do actually we'll pass this state and action so after then if product found so if product found we'll do something so we'll just return so the return will be a state dot map will map this product will get every time a product then from here we'll just add an arrow that means functions and actually here we'll write if product have an id so i have an product id equal equal product dot product id then we will simply return an object so that would be we will copy the product and then we will set quantity quantity the quantity will be p dot quantity plus one otherwise we will have a else and then we'll just return the return statement will be an array that would be we're copying the state then here we'll just do the same thing that we did for the products so let me go to the product producers and here product producers and we will do the same thing actually on these cart items so after this actually we will paste it so we need uh, a next id so we can just copy it from product producers the similar thing at the top sorry here we will just do at the same time and here are some warning actually it's you can just disable these actions so that's it actually here this is an a block so we can just also int a is block and here we'll simply return p okay the first one is done 
and let me check it so if it's work or not so here we'll define return that would be a state okay let me just test it so for this we have to just combine it with a root reducer so we'll go to the root reducer and let me combine it here so for this what we will do we'll just define a curves and that would be card reducers okay let's try to check it so our product has gone actually we are not saving each one database so that's why it's just losing every time but okay let me check it the quantity will be 10 hit this add button then product is available so let me just console let me clear if you hit maybe we can just console log here actually uh, you can just console log maybe let me uh where is the actions maybe you can just try to console log clg maybe product so it's not working here we can just uh we can just do it actually let me just console log here so let's try so by default it's refreshing let me a product bags url will be second url a quantity price and quantity hit here now fine on products is then if you hit add items you can see it's calling items so let's move it let's what you have to do if you have to just show it on the number so that's why we'll just back to the component sections and here we want to show it on number so let's open the number from here we need to uh, get the cards so that would be cards and we'll use use selector and here we'll get the state and then we'll just check state dot cards after then we'll just define a conost dispatch dispatch and we'll use dispatch dispatch method sorry and then we can just calculate a cart item so let me calculate conost cart items number equal we'll just define cards dot reduce reduce then we will have two things first one will be total then we will have product actually after then we'll define a arrow functions so here we'll define total plus product dot quantity then zero so let me just show it on maybe where is the index number be here we can just show it actually here okay let me check it so right now okay by default the cart is zero now if you hit then it's not dispatching why the problem it's not working actually maybe
update my console log clg cards okay if you hit why oh, it's not showing maybe there is no cards card reducers is uh, I made any mistake so actually so let me just try to inspect it so here let me remove it and hit this add to button actually it's not doing anything actually of what it's happened actually here you can see our add to cart buttons here on this add to cart buttons we just set a handler but we can't use it we have to use it so that's why firstly we'll just dispatch and we will just import use dispatch from react redux and we have to dispatch the action so we have to dispatch these um actions actually so sorry where is the actions these actions so add to cart actions on this uh, product dispatch so we'll just import it and then here we'll pass the product so who is product actually the top product so that's why if you just do it then let me just now console log this actually so from here actually you're showing on here actually uh, we are just console logging the card so by the first time you can see but so if you hit this add to card button then you can see uh, the items is added to the card and we have three cards actually so you can see we have to just hit this for three times so let me uh, just show you again hit sorry maybe hit then if you just inspect it check the console here you can see the item is added so if the item is added what you can do actually if the item is added though the quantity is not working properly actually here we didn't have mass actions we uh, make sure that we have other cases only have only one case but we don't define uh, increase how in uh, the quantity will increase or decrease so that's why we have to also define others are uh, reducers for these actions uh, for this card times so let me define other cases though the case will be it's actually working so let me wait here let me define um, how the quantity will be so that would be for uh, increase quantity or let me just write the remove quantity first so free move from quantity and it's very simple we'll simply return and the return will be we'll just call the estate then we'll map it then we'll actually we'll not map it we'll actually filter it so filter method and we'll check every time we'll get a product and here we'll have to define check e product dot id is equal to actions dot payload actions dot payload then we'll return that actually it will be not we'll return this and this is done and for the next case the case would be for so let me define a case the case would be for increase quantity increase quantity and here what you have to do you have to just return it so return and that would be we'll just map the state and then every time we'll get product and here we'll have a functions curly braces inside this we'll check if product dot id equal equal action dot payload then we'll just return object so that would be we'll copy the product and then we'll just increase the quantity the quantity will be product quantity 
product dot quantity plus one else will return product okay and lastly we need last one so that would be for the case would be for decrease quantity then here we have to return the return will be same uh, same thing actually we will just do the same thing here and actually we'll take items and here we'll just reduce the minus one minus otherwise we'll return the product okay let's check it now we don't have any product let me add a new product let me add second one add pricing add quantity 10 hit add to cart and now hit add to carts it's say it's 10 actually the quantity is now 10th but actually maybe we can just do a thing here actually maybe it's increasing 10th so here we have to do i think we'll just receive a state and we'll map this we'll check id and here will be state and then we'll call in this state we'll have id maybe now is it work or not let me add if we hit add then it's increasing to 20 actually for it's increasing by 10th Maybe here is I did I made any mistake? Quantity will be P dot quantity plus one. okay here's maybe the mistake here the quantity we're setting actually uh all objects we just need to define one actually that's the mistake that's why it's not working properly let me add a product now it's zero if you hit on time it's one if you hit second time it's two so the mistake was here actually we need to define uh one here we just made a mistake there so if you can see hit again it's there but here we don't are uh, reducing the decrease quantity so you can just decrease the amount from here so let me just do that stuff so for this actually we'll go to product item so where is the product item uh, we can close all this stuff for now so let me just make it simple close all okay uh we'll go to the product items and here what you have to do you have to define another action so that would be we'll just dispatch and we'll disperse remove quantity so 
So maybe open this reducer functions or actions. Sorry, this, this is not the one actually. We need to go back to this product sections, then actions. Remove quantity, actually this one. Let me just type remove quantity and and we'll pass the ID actually. Okay, uh, right now. And then on the number, actually, what you have the rest on the number, we'll go back to the number sections. And here, after this, actually, we'll define, or you can just define it here, we'll define another handle. Patience, actually, is it required now? So maybe we can just do it later. If you hit, it's increasing. The quantity is working so if the quantity why the available product is not showing maybe we can calculate this from here it's actually not removing why actually not removing from product item let me hit then it's five and here we have this quantity but here is the quantity maybe this is not the functionally working here the difference is that we just make sure that we have another quantity but it's not the same quantity so maybe we make a mistake so let me just check it it's from home page eight number line so that's why here actually maybe we are just make a mistake on these product reducer functions and remove quantity here maybe the mistake is so here is the quantity but here the mistake okay now i think it will work properly let me add this product when you hit then it's now nine if you hit again it's two and here is eight if you just hit multiple times and now it's 9 and 10th and if you hit again then it's 0 and it's minus 1 because we didn't disable this button let me just disable this button so when have to disable make disable and here we'll apply when quantity equal equal 0 then the button will be disabled let me just uh, refresh it and again add choose category so that image choose quantity uh, price and let me add quantity for three times and here this is when you hit on it's reducing on it's adding one if you hit again it's two and it's one and now if you hit again then you can see available quantity zero and the button is disabled so this items is not working but here we need to just make another reducer for the page chains. so we'll just create another reducer for the page chains. maybe we can create a new folder for the page chains actually so let me create a page and here inside this page we simply decide page reducer reducer functions then we'll define a JS file and here actually uh, we'll define a initial state initial state that would be home true after that we'll need to define a variable so that would be a function actually base reducer and here we'll define a state 
and action that would be a functions we have to export it export default page reducer okay that's it and here actually we need to define initial state initial state at this uh, moment we'll use twice statement that would be here action dot type and here we need to define a type and now we are just using hard coded so this is home by default we'll return and then we'll return home true home equal true otherwise in this case we will have another case the case will be for cards so that would be for card base we need to define return and the return will be return sorry uh, that would be home false home false okay and by default we'll return a state okay that's it and we'll use in your root reducers and here that would be uh, our root reducer will define page page and the page will be actually pages and the page will be page reducer okay input it so it's done now we can just toggle it on mapper actually so let me create a new folder for the my cart page cart.csx rafce and we'll toggle when someone hit this home he, he will on this page when he someone hit this then it will open the cart page so for this we'll go back to the navbar sections and here actually we have to write the functionality when what will happen so we'll just define a handle page change and it will be a functions inside this functions we'll pass the type okay fine and we need to dispatch so that's why let me install this uh, let me just define dispatch sorry it's dispatch from use dispatch import it after then inside this actually will dispatch then we'll need to define curly braces will define then type okay that's it so now where is the okay we are just using to discuss let me remove this dispatch so here actually when the current button this is the current button and here there are some options look when you hit this then it's showing this we don't need this so that's why um actually maybe this is cart and we have tab index we don't need this tab index and here maybe actually we don't need this okay so this is card maybe i need this one but after then where is the sbc when you hit maybe it's not okay it's fine so it's not showing anything now on this button when this is clicked maybe this is the thing where is the url okay cut items and after then we have this okay we don't need deep deep actually here you can see we don't need these sections this div so if you remove right now everything is fine 
if you hit then it's showing on so when someone hit then it will go to the card page so that's why here we'll just call this handle change functions so where is the drop down so let me check this after this drop down actually we will have a button rule and here actually we'll set the one click and we'll call this handle change and we'll pass card okay so if you just do this then when you hit it will redirect to the card piece but it's not showing why actually here we have to add the uh, conditions on this card piece on this page actually so we'll just define conost page the space will be we'll use selector selector and here we'll just pass a state will receive a state then we'll just define a state dot pages after then what you have to do we have to check return from here we'll have a empty fragments we don't need this we'll check let me just define page dot home then it will be home component otherwise it would be my cart components okay let's check it refresh uh maybe is an error is happening let me check the key props from base reducer maybe where is the hero actually refresh it it says uncode reference hero key for the pages from root reducer combined reducer so maybe let me check our root reducers so here i just use spaces and maybe in this page sections state dot pages everything is fine can we just console log the page mm, product reducer has a console log let me just go to the uh, remove the console log from where the console log is product reducer okay uh, maybe the console log is here we just remove this console log but it's not showing uncode reference your root reducers combat reducers then maybe keep base is not showing So let me go to the page reducers here by default action home initial state so when home return home true home false and by default state so go to the root reducer and here we'll have combines we will have maybe we can just can we just make it here so that it will work i don't think so it's actually not working so let me check the page reducer again it's home then initial state so that would be 
form equal true and it would be inside uh, objects so that's fine and here we have a state equal initial state and action and action dot type when home then it would be home so let me check this way when home when card it's false otherwise default so let me copy this and go back to the page sections here Never will pass dive so in this patch we have an object so that would be a type and This is for cards. That would be maybe you can just paste this card. Okay, the mistake is here actually. We pass the props, but we didn't define something like this. So that was the error. And we can do it for the home button. Here is the button. And instead of this, we'll just define home. This is the mistake, but it takes a little time. Let me refresh. Maybe our project is stopped. So here the server is crashed. So we have to run this again. Let me close it. Yes, terminate. NPM run drive. Now it's running. Uh, still not showing the issues Ah, uh, sorry, the mistake is here. We didn't return, so that's why the mistake actually. Now I think we can just solve this mistake. Okay, fine. So if you hit, then it's my card piece. If you hit home, then now it's the product piece. So again, let's try clothing. Choose this on. Pricing will be fifty dollars. Quantity will be ten. Hit. Then the product is showing. If you hit add to cart, it's add to cart now when you hit this add to cart then this is the add to cart we have to display uh, cart items and then we have to just uh, show the billing so for this actually we'll just do it on my cart piece and so that's i go to the my cart piece and here actually we'll just define const cards equal we'll just use use selector and we'll just take a state then we'll have a state dot cards so if you have a state dot cards so then let's here we define a div in this div we'll define some class name that would be py12 then we need max tableau 7 excel then we need so we need mx auto okay something like this 
actually we need some padding so px will be true okay let's check it so here maybe this is my card card base so let me check it when you hit home then it's home when you hit it okay uh, we can just remove it maybe eight okay that is the card base we need to design the card base so for this here we need to define a div so actually we can just remove the container and uh, uh, actually inside this div or we don't need this we can simply define a is to type and that would be shopping cart and here we'll add some class name let me define mb5 then text excel then we need font bold okay let me check it's shopping and the shopping card will be by default so here we'll have another div in this div we'll have another div here we'll just check cards dot length then we'll just check if cards dot map and here we'll just get product item and we want to show it so maybe we can just show it as a paragraph tag or you can just create a component so the component will can be the card item dot jsx rfce and we can just import it here card item and we'll pass key will be p dot id and product will be product will be this p okay that's it otherwise we'll show our paragraph tag so maybe this paragraph tag no product in the cart okay so this is the thing by default if you refresh now add products if you hit then on products if you hit then no products in the cart but if you back to the home hit again then if on products then cart items actually we need to design the product item for now and here actually let me just add a little bit customizations we will just make sure so here that would be flex and by default it would be flex call then on medium devices we will define flex row justify will be between then empty cap will be eight and by default cap will be four okay that's fine and in this div actually we'll add class name space y will be six then we define on medium devices with would be two by three okay that's it so here we need another div so this is for billing items let me add class name this is for b billing the billing will be something like on medium devices w will be one by three okay let me check here is the billing this is the cards so let's design the cards for now so cart items and here actually uh, i can just copy some code actually i am very annoying just feel let me copy uh, some code from the git repository for the cart items and i will just show you you can just go 
to the, my github repository and can check this git repository from here so let me go to the components here cut item so we can just copy this div from this div to actually i don't have enough time to do this for today so let me paste it we'll remove all thing all this error actually we'll just show it how you can just do it okay so let me remove all remove all actually the functionality i just implement it here and uh, remove it and also need this icon so for this maybe we can just import this icon at the top maybe just icon is it uh used icons or react icons so let me install these icons so for this we'll just using react icons so let me open this git bash and paste it here okay so now let's implement firstly we need to show uh the informations so that's why here we'll receive products so here you can see from this my card we are just passing the product so we'll receive product here then we'll destructure it so let me destructure the product so it will be an array and here we'll just define product and firstly we'll destructure id name destructure img url one kt then category then price and finally product id product id okay so we can just quite fix it so okay fine after then uh, we need to show it so here we need to show the image so that would be src and here we want to show the image url so if you do this then you can just let me add again hit add to cart then go here yet you can see this is the image and this is the okay fine then we need to show the pricing here will be the dollar sign color prices so inside here we pass the prices after that we need to pass the quantity so sorry category fine then this is fine then here we need to show the value so that would be value and this value will be quantity look the value is now the quantity and if you add two times then you can see the we uh, it's added two times uh, or actually it's added two time three times or uh, maybe uh, so for now what actually we have to do quantity is on then we need to show the pricing here actually we'll calculate the pricing here pricing will be price into quantity so it's showing actually it's showing three times but we don't want this so maybe hmm, okay so for now i think everything is okay okay let me implement some functionality for this uh how to remove maybe we need to remove this item so for this let me implement conost dispatch dispatch from use dispatch and here if 
firstly we'll just make a handle function so conost handle remove item then we'll just pass this function and from here it will be arrow functions inside this we'll call this pass then we'll call remove from cart and we'll pass an id after then from here we'll also dispatch and then we'll add quantity then we'll have product id then we'll have quantity okay we'll call it from these actually from where actually where is the button uh, this is the button and from here we'll call this sorry that will be one click one click it will be handle remove so let's try if you hit then it's moving well actually maybe um, our card items has some issues go back to the cut items cut reducers and here maybe we just making some issues you can just check the code for a little bit sorry i'm sorry for this and reducer functions here cards and maybe cards dot reducers maybe let me copy these sections or let me just copy all sections for now i just let me just do it initial listed not product actually it will be from this initial estate so okay now try again ten hundreds category will be hundreds okay if you hit it's one time second time click here okay it's not working actually may our problem is there on this sections please uh, write this code and so it's working if you hit then it's removing so back to the home then hit again then we have to increase this number when the plus is clicked so that's why what we'll do we'll just implement a uh, plus functionality so from here we'll just check if quantity equal equal zero will dispatch an another action so that would be handle remove from card so we'll call this actually from here and another time we'll just make a function so that we handle increase quantity and here what we'll do we'll just dispatch and then we'll just increase quantity increase quantity and then we'll pass id after then we'll just dispatch again then we'll have a remove quantity quantity and will pass product id okay and for the decrease handle decrease quantity and here what we'll have to do we have to dispatch and we'll call the dispatch function decrease quantity will pass id otherwise we'll dispatch add quantity 
add quantity will dispatch product id and one here sorry it will be one here so let me just dispatch from the plus so here is the plus and here uh, this is the plus and on this is spent tag actually we'll define one click so one click in this one click we'll call handle increase quantity so let's check if you hit then its pricing is showing and now for the decrease quantity let me call this on this section so here is spent tag we'll just call one click and pass it here let me reduce it's reducing and when you hit minus then it's move let me try you can increase you can decrease okay so if you have two products or more let me just add clothing this one 50 10 okay if you hit this one then you can see we have two things you can also increase you can decrease so now the billing option so for this also why just copy uh, the billing and here we will create a billing components billing dot jsx and we'll copy these components again so let me copy this div and rafce we'll paste it here and we have to import this billing billing components okay so for this billing components here at the top what you have to do you have to just call the cards so almost cards equal we'll just import use selector from here we'll have a state then we'll have arrow state dot cards item then we can just calculate subtotal so subtotal total will be cards dot reduce function and here we'll have total and then item we'll have a function so that will be our functions we'll calculate total plus item dot price into item dot quantity and that would be by default zero so subtotal will be shown there and we need another one so that would be almost total billings and it will be subtotal it will receive subtotal and then it will just it check if subtotal is greater than zero will return four points uh, so will return subtotal sorry subtotal plus four point nine nine okay let's check so i think everything is fine so here the subtotal is calculating so if you increase then this value is increasing if you decrease then this value is decreasing right now you can see two items if you just decrease then it's working actually that was our goal when you hit the home button this is product if you can add new product so you can add this product also now you can see everything is fine if you hit click then it's removed if you hit this one it's removed and it shows zero okay that's my target and i can i think that you can just uh, understand how you can do it but if you have any problem you can check this git repository i just make this for you and just check this git repository and do what i did in this video so thank you